In this module, we examine the situation that is stored against each file and directory on the system. Let's have a look at what's available. There are three things that are stored against each file and each directory. First is, who owns the file? This is always a user ID or a username. We know this simply as the owner of the file. Every file has an owner. There's also a group that that file belongs to. And what that means is that all members of that particular group have a particular set of permissions over that file. And no members of any other group have any permissions over that file. And thirdly, there are a set of permissions that various parties have to access the file. We are going to learn more about the permissions in much greater depth in this chapter, including this module. Let's look now at the various permissions that are attributable to any given file or directory. And there are three sets of these. Three sets of permissions, 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 each file. Let's have a look at what each, th each of the three is. First, there are the access privileges of the owner of the file. What is the owner allowed to do to the file? Well, you would assume that the owner is allowed to do anything. And strictly speaking, that is true, assuming that they know how to. Secondly, there are the access privileges of the members of the files group. In other words, if the file is considered to consider to consider to the sales group, then what are the access privileges of all the users that are members of the sales group? Finally, what are the access privileges of everybody else? So three sets of permissions may be specified here. What can the owner do to the file? What can the members of the group do to the file? And what can everybody else do to the file? It's very important to note that the only person that can change any of these things, and we're talking about the permissions, we're also talking about the owner, and we're also talking about the group, the only person that can change any of the above is the owner. If you're a member of a group that owns the file, it doesn't mean you can change anything. Only the owner can change any of these things. So how do we look at these things? How do we find out what the owner is, what the permissions are, and so on? Well, all of these may be examined using the minus L option to the LS program. Let's have a look at that minus L option right now. Let's see what happens if we do an LS minus L. Well, we get the following. We've briefly had a look at this particular way of using LS before. And I've briefly gone through and told you what some of those things mean, but now we're going to do that in some more detail. Firstly, this column here represents the file's owner. As you can see, every file in this particular directory is owned by me. Now, this column represents the group of the file. So the permission specified, which I'll show you in a second, pertain to all members of the users group. And thirdly, the permissions themselves are over here. That's what all these R's and W's and dashes and X's are all about. Now, remember I said that there are actually three of them, three sets of permissions for the owner, for the group, and for everybody else. Well, there are actually 10 spaces along here, 10 spots where letters can go. The first one has nothing to do with permissions at all. That's the file type. Notice that D is for a directory and dash is for a regular file. But the other nine are for the three groups that we were talking about, the three sets of permissions. So the first three are for the owner, the second three are for the group, and the third three are for everybody else. So for example, we have an R, W, and a dash for the owner of this file, which is mVirtue. We have an R, a dash, and a dash for the group called users. And then we have an R, a dash, and a dash for everybody else, everyone who's not called mVirtue and everybody who's not a member of the users group. I'll be explaining what the R's and W's and dashes and X's and so forth mean in the next module. For now, I just want you to be able to read this uh, LS minus L listing. And it's really not that hard when you know what the various components are. The first letter is the file type, and then there are three sets of three. And each one is an R or a dash, a W or a dash, and an X or a dash. 
depending on whether we call the R is turned on or off, the W is turned on or off, and the X is turned on or off. So we have the R and the W both turned on, and the X turned off. Whereas here we have the R turned on, the W turned off, and the X turned on. Let's go and examine what those three letters actually mean. Firstly, I'll mention the simplest case, which is that of files. And for files, it's very straightforward. R means that the person, such as the owner of the group or everybody else, has permission to read the file. That means they can examine the contents of the file, perhaps using cat or more or head or tail or something like that, anything that will allows them to read the contents of the file. That could even be using the copy command, CP. Obviously, you can't copy the file if you can't open it up and see what's inside it. Then the W command means that you can modify or write the file. We haven't looked at any commands yet that will modify files, but a good example might be the text editor. So you could open up a text file, make some modifications to it using the editor, and save those changes. But you would not be able to do that if you did not have write permission available to you. Finally, the X permission means that you can execute the file. Now that only makes sense if the file is a program, either a binary program or a shell script. It's possible to set the X permission for any other type of file, such as a text document or something similar, but it makes absolutely no sense to do it and doesn't give you any benefit. Unix may attempt to run the file, but will, qu will quickly realize that it is not a program and not execute it at all. Now, those three permissions, RW and X, mean completely different things when talking about directories. For R, when you're talking about directories, that means it enables you to view the contents of the directory. In other words, you can do things like do an LS on the directory. LS obviously lists the names of the files in that directory, which, if you like, you might call the contents of the directory. Now, the most important one, I guess, is the W permission. Can you create or delete files in the directory? Now, I've got to stress something. It's absolutely critically important that you understand this. If you've got a given file, that file may not be able to be modified because the W thing might be turned off. But that file may be able to be deleted because the W thing is turned on for the directory that the file is sitting in. So if you want to protect a file, turning off the W bit is not enough. You also need to turn off the W bit for the directory. Now we're going to talk about that in the last module of this chapter. I'm going to show you a serious security loophole in Unix security. It's only serious because most people don't know about it. So they're not aware that they're leaving themselves with a security risk. Finally, the execute permission means for a directory that you can actually go there using, say, CD, you can access the directory. Let's try a few examples now. Here's our list of files again. Now, clearly, I will be able to examine the contents of user.list. I could do, say, cat user.list. How do I know that I can do that? Well, because I have read permission on the file. So there is the contents of user.list. Do an ls minus l again. Now, I've got a file here that I don't have permission to read, which is called another.txt, so I'll do that now. Uh, sorry, cat, that file, another.txt, and I, that's permission denied. I'm not allowed to examine the contents of that particular file. Now, when it comes to directories, am I, exam am I allowed, for example, to examine or even go to the contents of, say, home slash avon? So I can go, but can I, I examine of it? Let's have a look. No, permission denied. So I would assume then that the X permission is turned on for the home Avon directory, but the R is turned off. Now, which one of the three, owner, group, or others? Well, that would be group, because I'm a member of the same group as Avon. So if this entry here was the home Avon directory, then the X bit would be turned on and the R bit would be turned off. That particular, the middle one, the, the, the one relating to groups. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, the 
root user is the user that never sees the words permission denied. 